Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash and in today's video I'd like to show you how you can generate sample packs. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now I've got five drum channels here and on every single one of these is a sampler where in which I've filled uh, 128 samples. So the kick has 128 kicks in it and I can adjust those by adjusting this select knob. The same goes for the tom, uh, the clap, and the, the hats are a little different. I haven't filled them with one shot, so I've actually filled them with top loops. That just means that if we have a slightly longer note, we're going to be able to we're going to be able to get a little bit of that uh, other loop sounds, like cutting through. Now, what I'd love to do is to create a way that with a single button, I can generate different combinations, different variations of these sounds. And the way that I'm going to do that is by using a polygrid. So let's go straight to the kick, and I'm going to create a polygrid, wherever that is. God, the new browser is quite slow, I have to say. And in here, I'm going to delete everything, and then put the instrument into the effects channel. Now I need three things. I need a trigger, to tell the dice when to roll, and then I need a modulator out to send the value rolled by the dice into our instrument. I'm also going to add a button beforehand because that allows me to modulate this from outside of the, the grid. So the first thing I need to do is modulate the select knob, and that just means that basically as I press trigger, every single time this dice is going to be giving a different value that's then picking, as you can see here, a different select, so i.e. a different kick drum. Now, I might also take another, just copy and paste this down, I'd like to do some sort of thing maybe with the decay length. So let's make it so that we can have different decays. Maybe let's also put a filter. So we'll do uh, the possibility of it opening up. And let's also do maybe a little bit of resonance. So now we're getting four different Four different possible things that can change here. Now I'm going to straight away in my project panel map a button to control this button. This can be called random. Now I can in my project panel adjust that kick. Next up we have the tom. The first thing I want to do is again map the select knob. So let's bring the kick and that in so we can hear what we're doing. Ah, I have to put this inside of the, uh, inside, oh, why is this not working? There we go. Now I can uh, modulate things inside here to control things within the effects. So I'm going to now map the select knob. Let's also straight away map this button. Oh, it's already done, that's nice. Maybe we also want to do a little something something with the uh, filter. So let's bring let's bring the filter down again to similarly about 300. Let's map that up. Let's do another one that can do something with the resonance. Not too much. And then I've also got down here uh, an AD that just can open up can open up that filter. So I'm going to do one more and I'm going to use that to control the amount. Let's also maybe do a little bit of decay modulation here on that uh, envelope. Let's also let's possibly increase the decay here as well and we'll do one for the release. Now let's go to the clap theory I should have that loaded. Okay, let's put that into the effects. Now I'm going to map this to the select of the clap. Let's bring the clap in as well. I'm also going to do a similarly with the decay. Let's make a nice short one here. So we can go from short to long. I'm also going to put the filter to maybe one kilohertz. Uh, let's map that to opening the filter. Let's do one on the resonance a little bit. Ooh. 
super cool. Now, onto the hats. This offbeat hat is, as I mentioned before, actually a top loop. So if I remove everything but the kick and the hat, I don't necessarily want to have anything other than just the little tight bit. So put that into the effects. Maybe I don't want any lingering on from the uh, of, of the actual loop itself. So first, let's just map this to the select. Let's do another one that then increases the release because then this release might give us some of those longer notes coming through, which is actually quite cool. Let's bring the release down. Let's do something with the decay. We'll map that all the way up to the top. So we might actually get some long ones. Let's do a little bit of sustain there as well. Let's do one that changes the shape of the decay, maybe. Maybe also do a little bit on the attack. Do a little on the shape of the attack. Okay, that's quite cool. Now we'll do the same thing for the final hi-hat, but I've got a little idea here on the final hi-hat, which is that because of the fact that we have here this note repeats, and if I bring the counts down, so we're just on four, what I'd like to do for this is I'd like to also change the... Let's bring you into here. I'd like to also change the chance of how many notes we're going to get. So first, let's just map that to the select. Let's also now map the density down. Let's bring it down, say, 30 40%. Let's do something with the rotation as well. So maybe we'll go a little percentage down there. Let's do something with the amount of, veloc of high velocity notes. And then we'll also do a little bit of the, um, the velocity of the low notes. I'd also quite like to do something with the filter here, so maybe we open the high pass even a little bit more, do a little bit of resonance, maybe let's do some decay, let's do some sustain, let's also do a little bit of that release as we, as we spoke about. I think this I've set to mono. Yeah, that's good. So now if we were to do a... Now, here's another cool thing. Why don't we use the expression? Seeing as we have different velocities coming out of here, let's use the velocity to change the start point of the loop. So let's see. In fact, let's not use the velocity, but let's create one more for these macros that can be used to change the start point of the loop. Because then that means that we're getting not just the things happening at the beginning of the loop, but also later. And I think I'll also do that on the actual offbeat hat, because that's just an extra bit of uh, variation that we can get there. Okay, so if we listen now, by just pressing this one button... We can create completely different um, samples, uh, sort of sample combinations. Now what I'd like to be able to do is to record out little two bar loops of these and have them automatically separated for me so that I don't have to keep uh, randomly generating and then recording new clips. And the way that I'm going to do that is by creating two audio channels. And the reason I'm going to do two is because I'd like to keep the kick and the tom on one channel. We'll call that low end. And then I'll keep the uh, hats and the clap as the top end. This just means that if I want to be able to take the kick and the tom out when I'm using it, I've got it. But of course, they are the same, uh, the same vibe. So we've got low end. And I'm going to put the kick and the tom. I'm oh, sorry, that's low end. And we've got this group, which is tops. Uh, let's make those white for the hell of it. And I'm going to take the input of the low end group, take the output of this low end group, which should be called low end. And then on the tops, I'm going to take the output of the tops group, master. Now, if I were to record enable these both and uh, record a new clip, you can see that we're now getting these recordings. And of course, if I were to generate and do a new clip, 
you can see that's reflected in the audio. But I don't want to have to manually do this. So first I'm going to take a step sequencer and I'm going to say let's put this to uh, a bar and I only want two steps so two bars. The first bar is going to make this button high. It's going to make the gate high so therefore it's going to every time we start it's going to give us a completely different um, in theory. Oh there we go. So that's now going to give us a different uh, a different combination of sounds every time we start the bar. Next, I'd like to head over to my project panel here and I'm going to go to the post record action and select record into next free slot after two bars. And that means that by slot we're talking about scenes here. If I make uh, 15 scenes I can record 15 clips. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these as record enabled I can now actually also, uh, probably I don't need to hear these, so I can mute those. Oh. And I'm just going to record, so let's just press play and see what happens. though perhaps the start point modulation isn't the best idea so I'm going to remove that. It's just making it a little bit tighter. And of course because I've only got 15 clips here, ooh! That's eventually going to get to the end and stop recording. If I wanted to quickly make more, uh, I could just add a few more scenes. But the point is now, of course, that I've got my little stems folder here. And if I particularly like this one, I think. No, this one. It's important to note as well that one of the best reasons to record for two bars is sometimes it doesn't carry over from the from the end of the previous clip. So if you did want to now separate this into just being one bar, it's exactly the same as if it was the two bars. It's just you don't end up with that weird changeover note at the beginning, which sometimes can sound quite cool. And if I wanted to, I could now save this. Let's say um, yeah, save launch eclipse library, which is of course. Control S. I can click that, and I can call this low end scene. Or I can call this low end 13. And then on this one, I can save that as tops 13. Well, folks, that's sadly all we have time for today. But I do hope that this video was useful. If you enjoyed it, then please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and smash that notification button too to keep up to date with my future videos. If you'd like to book a one-to-one -one lesson with me, feel free to head over to calendly.com slash tashteachers, the link of which will be in the description down below, or perhaps consider becoming a patron. In the meantime, happy Wednesday and happy creating.